good morning. I am one half of the Highwaymen, and my name is Jason. Hello there, everybody. Uh, I'm the other half, and my name's Steve. It's good to see you. Jay, what we doing? Man, I love these. It's always a surprise. So it's been a little bit different today. We've got a music video and song to kind of review. Um, something a little bit different. It's the new song by a group called, you may or may not know them, called The Damned. Have you heard of The Damned? Well, I have. Weren't they around in the 80s? Okay, well, actually, they started in the 1970s, 47 years ago this year. Um, and they, they they were the first, yeah, they were the first um, punk band to release a single and an album. And they had a big hit in the 80s with a song called Eloise, which is the one you might remember. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they've been going strong ever since. I've been a fan since the uh, late 80s when my sister... Um, her new boyfriend was into the whole punk thing and she she started he started taking her to concerts and she'd go to a concert and she'd buy the bootleg tape of the previous concert and she'd okay. sit in the bath at night listening to the listening to the on the on the tape recorder as it was back in the day and I could hear it through the sound and I started to get into it and they took me to the to my very first concert and which was the damned and I remember um uh, Dave Vanian who's the lead singer coming out um, and he's a very kind of theatrical um, sort of person and uh, very much into sort of the dressing up kind of image. And he came out, um, he's always gone for the vampire thing. So in the in the 70s, he was doing kind of the, the tuxedos. You know, when everyone was wearing leather jackets and chains and slash T-shirts, he was wearing a tuxedo with a dicky bow with slicked back hair and blacked out eyes. He was for me, he, to me, he's the original goth. You know, he's the one that kind of okay. started the, cool. the, the... And then in the 80s, he had the long hair with the big white streak. Um, that, you may remember that. And uh, and I, I remember do. the first yeah. first time I saw him on stage and he had the big, like, bouffant, like Dracula, like Gary Oldman in the Dracula film. And um, uh -huh. and every and every time he came out, every time I saw them in concert, which is many times, I've always been sort of excited to see what he's wore because he's gone through... He went for a kind of rockabilly look and then he did a bit where he was kind of... Um, using kind of the German Gestapo thing. He had like the long boots on and the long leather coat and stuff like that and, and different kind of looks along the way. So um, and I have to say, I get a lot of my style inspiration from some of the things that he wears. Um, and, um, you know, very much a kind of hero of mine. And then you've got Captain Sensible, you remember, from Happy Talk. Yes. Another one, yes. you know, hits on his own. He kind of left the band for a long time and, and they've been back together for a while. And they just bring out such amazing music i think and um they've kind of been mostly sort of missed by the press and uh, by the mainstream um but this is the 12 studio album this is the single from the new album um they just make great music they continue to make great music now i think and i think you know i want to share it with the world i want to share it with you i want to see what you think of it uh, for your first listen the track's called okay. invisible, invisible man um and again uh, Dave Anion was always in, very much into the old style horror films, you know, the Hammer House and stuff like that. So a lot of the, if over the time, a lot of the records are kind of inspired by some of the kind of darker goth kind of thing. So it's called Invisible Man. And um, I think it's a pretty great track. Let me know what you think. Okay, let me go. Okay. Okay, so we've got Dave Anion on vocals, Captain Sensible on lead guitar, Monty Oxymoron on keyboards, who is a bit of a genius. I think, uh, and he's so he's an he's an older chap, but he's so much fun to watch when they're in concert because he just goes absolutely mental. Um, Paul Gray, who was he a bassist with the band in the eighties, and he's recently returned for the last two albums. And Will Taylor, who I don't know a great deal about, but he's a new drummer. This is his first um, song with the band as the new oh, drummer. Oh, okay. So here we go. So what we'll do, we, I'll I'll split it down into thirds. We'll listen to the first third, then we'll listen to the second part, and then we'll. Um, We'll we'll talk about it at the end. Have a chat, see what we think. Okay. Bit of lava lamp going on there. Bit of sixth inspiration.
So far, what do you think? Do you know what? Yeah, I quite like it. I can absolutely see the tie-in with it, because, of course, I'm remembering Eloise. Yeah. And, and the rift and... and uh, it's very similar, in yeah. all honesty, isn't it? So you can tell who they are just from but, listening to it. Let's well, it I actually way. think they've got a lot of different... You know, you, you listen to the album, there's so many different influences. There's such a kind of odd mix of people that when you have an album, you get such a, a mix of songs and, and you never really know what you're going to get and from one track to the next and from one album to the next, which is really good. I think, you know, I just think they're really, really talented musicians. Um, I he love the lyric there. good for his age. In the, uh, in, the 60s, in the 60s now. In the 60s now. 63, 64. Yeah. Do you know good, what? Yeah. That actually promotes a rock and roll lifestyle, doesn't it? Absolutely. I don't mind looking that good. Yeah. His age, that's, that's really good going. Um, I liked the um, I like the bass guitarist gear. I liked yeah. his hat and the his beret. glasses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's lead guitar. That's, no, that's, that's, that's got, Captain Sensible. Yeah. Yeah, Captain yeah, no, Sensible. the bass guitarist. He's got like a top hat and some steampunk glasses going. Oh, on. That, no, that's he's that's Monty. That he's the keyboard player. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, I thought he had a guitar on in his hand. No, he's on keyboards. Right, okay. So, All right, well, Monty, I like Monty. It jumps, it jumps up in in tempo a little bit now. No, oh, I wasn't. Right. Okay, let's go. Now, I wasn't sure about that bit the first time I heard it because it kind of just suddenly randomly goes into this really high tempo, um, psychedelic keyboards kind of. And then obviously there's the kind of the little uh, rap through the middle of it with the uh, crazy laughing. But it works really well once you listen to it a couple of times. Well, it's clearly about the whole song is about hallucinogenic. It's easy for you to say hallucinogenic drugs. So the whole thing. Well, no, I'm no, not really. No, no, because it, it's, it's the Invisible Man. So it's obviously inve inject yourself over a couple of weeks. It's based on the, the film, The Invisible Man. No, I said. see it a different way. You see it. No, you I think see the, the drug influence. Well, yeah, no, I'm gonna... Nobody can see him. No one can see what's going on there. And he's in and all the cycle. And what we've just experienced there was the high of it. That's what no, I'm seeing. No, I think um, again, knowing the band, knowing Dave Vaney and his his, his uh, interest in horror movies um, from the old fashioned. They've just done a big concert with Hammer House of Horror, um, which is um, which was amazing. To be honest, I've got the DVD of that. But no, it's definitely a reference to the movie. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick there. It's definitely a reference to the movie. I think unless okay, unless we'll somebody can up. tell me other, we'll, we'll ring him up and, and ask, ask him. him and ask him and ask him. Yeah. No doubt he's one of our subscribers, Jake. What's that? There's no doubt he's one of our subscribers. I'm sure he'll get darker anyway. Who's that? Granddaughter? Yeah. 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 Oh, that was good. That was good. I like that bit. That, that, that was clever. Just drive, fool. Charming. Just drive, fool. So. Nice car, nice car. Jag 150. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's a really good song, and I think they're still bringing out good songs, and it's from the new album, Dark Adelic, which comes out in April, which I'm really excited to get. I've already got my order in. So what do you think, then? First time I, listen. I, 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 I see why you like them so much. That's right up your... If I, it's, it's a bit more than down your street, isn't it? It's in your front door and upstairs to your bedroom. Absolutely. So it's absolutely... That is you all over. 
Um, and um, I, I do see a, a slightly more sinister look in it, but of course yeah. you won't see any badness in it at of all. Of course, and not. I'm probably wrong. You, you, good wholesome. You know they're right. good wholesome boys. They are good wholesome boys. Righto. Yeah, you you take them home to meet your mum. That's, that's exactly who they are. So, Absolutely. but I, yeah, I'm in, I'm impressed. I, is it something I'll go out and listen to? No. No, it frankly it, it isn't. But then I'm more of a carpenter's kind of a person. I, bet, I, just I, was, I, was, I, just... I meant to ask what right at the beginning. What is it that you listen to? Because I have no clue. I listen to pretty much most things, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, for literally from Ramstein, and I will go all the way through to the Carpenters. Uh, really? It really depends on what mood I'm in. So I don't have a favourite artist per se, and I don't have a, a, a favourite group, which is sad, really. It's sad. I don't think I've ever had anything like that. So, so I'm rather envious of of your of your passion with it. It's like football. I've never followed a football. I um, think is I think it's, like it's a, for me again discovering them in the eighties that they already had a back catalogue of, of albums. Um, so when you when you find yeah. a new band that's been established for a while and then you go back and you kind of discover all this great music at once, and it led me from the Dam to the Clash um, and you know other kind of punk kind of genres punk things but um but you know i've never been disappointed with an album um there's always a lot of the you know especially the more the older track you know the older albums um the two three of my favorite machine gun etiquette strawberries and the black album there's there's no bad track you know there's no b-sides on it for me you know i listen to them all and i think they're all cracking tracks you know sometimes you go out and you'll buy i mean i remember buying uh red hot chili peppers blood sex magic um, blood sex magic, something like that, uh, and being so disappointed that there was only one decent track on it, which was the one that was the hit, you know, and and that's right. really disappointing. But when you get a band where you kind of like go on and you listen to every single track and think, my God, that is an amazing track, um, and that's what the damned are for me. You know, I go on, I listen to the album, and I listen pretty much to every single track. The last couple of albums have had a couple of what I would call B sides on them, but um, generally speaking, they always deliver for me. <laughs> Talking about LPs, just talking about LPs, I couldn't tell you the last time I personally bought one for me, okay? Yeah. But Charlie, my daughter, is really into Taylor Swift, really oh, okay. into Taylor Swift. And she's got a, a, a proper 1980s um, hi-fi system, I guess, yeah. you know, you know, like we used to have back yeah. then, with, with two tape cassettes and and, and then the... the um, yeah. And the... the, the, the deck on top and all the other bits and been to, to the so anyway she she gets vinyl she's always she buys vinyl oh, okay oh my god anywhere between 50 to 70 quid for wow. a record wow 50 to 70 quid double album admittedly but holy moly I they're think not vinyl, cheap vinyl's now outselling cds I, I, I believe again yeah they are but, but they then are. see Retro i have back. See, I had a big hot back in the eighties. I bought a big hi-fi, which was five hundred pound at the time. So that's got to be equivalent to a, a few thousand in today's money. Oh, mate! Um, yeah, with like the six-player CD on it, and and, and I got rid of it because it because everyone went to those like smaller smaller things, which I'm I'm gutted really now. I wish I had it because I've still got a lot of my old records. Um, but there is that thing about vinyl with the crack with the crack, you know, the crackly sound and and stuff like that. But now I literally I, I've got i I've got iTunes. So I would download all my music on iTunes. I'll buy yeah. certain albums. Again, the damned, I'll buy it because I like to support the band rather than just because they get like 0.01 pence to listen or something. So I will buy the album on iTunes. I don't actually physically have it because I don't physically have a CD player anymore. Um, but I, I will buy the, uh, the, um, the, the album. So anyway, out of 10, mate, what are we giving it? Well, do you know what? Um, I'm going to give that a solid eight, Jay. And the Good only view, reason mate. I've deducted, the only reason I've deducted is, is purely because it's not my it's not my kind of thing. Yeah. But I could happily sit and listen to it. And will I go and watch them in concert? Yeah, frankly, for the entertainment, I would. Yeah. Well, I, so, I'd give it a I'd give it a ten because it is the damned, and I'd give every one of their songs a ten. But uh, and if you do get the opportunity to go and see them in concert, they are an absolutely phenomenal live band. They always have been, you know, always have been. I like and, that. Um, I like yes. that. They've yes. owned their craft. They have indeed owned their craft. Anyway, mate, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for listening. Hit the subscribe. Hit the like button. What else, Stephen? We've got to press that bell end. Well done, mate.
Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Good. Thank you for sharing that, Jay. That was good. I appreciate it. Cheers, guys. See you later. Thank you.